Hello. Hello, everyone. We're a little late on the time today. My apologies for that. Today, we're thinking about planning. Well, planning to start a bit. At the end of last year, you may have been involved. We sent out a survey asking speakers what did they what, what were their goals for 2023? Because bearing in mind we wanted to know what our audience wanted, then we could plan to support you in your goals. One of the findings was very curious because a number of respondents said they didn't have a plan. They had all these goals, but they didn't actually have a plan in place to meet those goals. Hmm. I know what that feels like. I not haven't been, past tense, red hot when it comes to the organisational department. However, I do have a calendar. A calendar for the whole year, because I'm a visual person. I like to see thing, an overview of things. So when I get into creative mode, when I get into problem solving and planning mode, I've actually got a roll of butcher's paper. And you'll find me sitting on the floor with about three metres worth of butcher's paper and my textures. And I do a screen dump, a data dump, a brain dump of what's going on in my head. So I can see the big picture. And then I translate those ideas into some form of a plan. This is where my calendar comes in, because I think, OK, what have I got coming up this year? Where are the big rocks, as I put them? And I'm sure you've seen our timeline for our mad year, our making a difference year. If you haven't, ask me about it. it means that we haven't we haven't seen you on our make a difference website. You haven't seen what we've got going on. If that's the case, DM me. Let's talk. We've got some big rocks in our year. We've got big rocks of the book launch. We've got big rocks in the form of our summits. One on health, one on wealth and business, one on relationships. We've got a couple of other big rocks in there as well. And then you start filling in the gaps. So one of the things that we were talking about on the masterclass last week was, are you clear about your message? Because speaking the right message to the right people at the right time, bing, you've got your audience listening to you and taking action, which is the most important thing, isn't it? Because otherwise we can sit and go, oh, yeah, that was very nice. But what are you doing about it? That's where wisdom comes in. It's knowledge applied. So you've been through the experience. You've got the, the wisdom out of it because you've applied certain knowledge to your situation. And now you know how to pass that information, that wisdom on to other people. It becomes their wisdom when they take on board what you've said as in information and then do something with it. It then becomes their version of wisdom bit of a definition thing there. Anyway, so we're back in on this, where are, are we speaking to the right people? Because you want to know where are you going to do your speaking? Plan for the year. What podcasts do I want to be on? What summits do I want to be on? Am I aiming for a conference? Am I aiming for a TEDx? If you're going for podcasts, if you're going for summits, if you're going for conferences in particular, you need to know who your audience is. Who's your ideal audience? Have you got that sorted out? Because remember what I was saying about the right message to the right people at the right time? Let me give you a bit of a clue as to what happened last year. If you haven't been with us over the last 12 months, some of this will be new to you. We started life with courageous, conscious, even conscious communicators. 
And if you go back and find the, the early part of some of the media from the beginning of this group, you'll find the Conscious Communicators Manifesto. And that didn't really get a great deal of traction with people. That was more about me coming off as sounding really quite intelligent. And it was about stroking my ego, if I'm honest. It didn't do the biz when it came to appealing and also serving the people I wanted to talk to. So then we had a second iteration as the, as the year went on. And that, your words have power now that was important because that was the platform that we did all year and that came out of the international women's day event that we ran suddenly your words have power made sense conscious communicator now that was not about my audience that was about me as i said ego stroking put that to one side your words have power? Aha. Now you're talking because I'm talking to you. I'm talking to the audience. I'm talking to speakers and saying that your words have power. How are you going to use them? And that took us all the way through to November when we had a third iteration come through. We still kept up the your words have power. And then we were nominated and shortlisted we were in a, we were finalists in the raw awards which are business awards here in australia in the mad category for making a difference Bing! up came a new iteration making a difference oh now that's really important isn't it because all of you guys are using your words powerfully to make a difference. So that's where MAD 2023 was born. How do we know when we're getting closer to the mark in terms of getting our message across to our ideal audience? Well, first off, you need to know who your ideal audience is. Have you worked that through? Have you got your avatar document sorted out? Can you tell me what they have for dinner? Can you tell me if they've got pets? And if so, what kind of pets and what are their names? Inhabit the skin, the livelihood, the life of your one ideal client. Because when you can get that clear on who it is you're speaking to, you can also be very clear about the language that you are using to speak to that one person. I shared on the masterclass some very useful websites that you can go looking for copy, SEO, if you will, keywords to use when you are speaking to your ideal audience. Make that SEO work for you. How do you know you're reaching your ideal audience? Well, you look at your plan, you look at who you're speaking to, and you look at your bottom line. Are you making sales? Are you getting revenue in? Are you getting those speaking gigs that either are paid or can lead you to a position where you can invite payment? Test and measure. Last year, we had some experience with paid adverts through Facebook. Was it an entirely wonderful success? No. Did we get some lovely people through the door? Yes, we did. And I'm very, very grateful for that. So probably got about four or five people who were ideal folks. This is where we did the test and measure. One lot of copy got nobody who was ideal material. 
and nobody came, came across the threshold. We changed the copy and we got a few definites in there. We've since revised the message again. As I said, that was still on your words have power. We've revised the message again with the mad authoring to start with, and then the summit's coming up. Test and measure. So far this year, and we're only six weeks in, we have cleared in revenue half of what we did for the entire year last year. That is testing, measuring, and going, I think we've got it. And now, am I going to sit back on my laurels and go, yep, we've got it, we've got it all, all sewn up? No. We constantly test and measure and tweak. If you're not somebody who, like me, traditionally wasn't happy with numbers, learn to love them. Because if you can put aside any anxiety over numbers, my coach is forever telling me numbers don't lie. They have no emotion attached to them. So whilst I may be going, hmm, how am I going to work this out? She's going, it's there in black and white. You are making a success. The numbers are going up. Last year, we kind of did that. And that's how we worked out what worked and what didn't. So. In conclusion, plan. Have you got one? What are your big rocks? What are your, what are the number of podcasts that you want to get on, the summits, the conferences? Where do you find that information? How can you get onto those, those opportunities? Who do you need to talk to? Who can introduce you to those people? And then once you've got that sorted, who's your ideal audience? Because actually you need to know your ideal audience before you go ahead and, and book yourself onto summits and things, because you need to know that that's your ideal audience. Otherwise, you remember I was talking about massaging my ego with the conscious communicators? Well, sometimes it's nice to be invited to speak on a summit, but if your ideal clients aren't there, who's it for? You're not serving your ideal clients. Again, it's a bit of a bit of massage there. Massage on the ego. Nothing wrong in that, except that is it a good return on your invested time? Get clear on who you're talking to. Get clear on the language you're using. Get clear on what you're saying, who you're saying it to, and how often you're saying it. Clarity and consistency is what you're after. That's what I have for you today. Please do get involved. If you don't know about the mad year, talk to me, DM me, let's have a chat because we do still have some opportunities for being a multi-author, multi-book author on our mad book. I'll pop the information in the chat. Let's talk. For now though, bye from me.